first of all, how many are there? All right, so there's seven cervical vertebrae. Your book um, it kind of breaks it down to typical ones and atypical ones. So the typical ones according to your book are three through six. They look the most alike, I guess you can say. So what would be the atypical ones? One, two, and seven are atypical. There's something unique about them. Okay, we'll start at the top is the atlas, also known as C1. The atlas is ring-like. It has no body. And a very short, some books say not at all, spinous process. Okay, it sits at the level of the mastoid tip. Where's the mastoid tip? That, and if you look at your skeleton, that bump right back here. Okay, so it sits at the level of the mastoid tip. And it functions to support the head. Okay, even though I wrote on your little um, vertebral pieces, who has a C1? So there's four of them up there. You can distinguish it right away. Okay. So they look like this. They're very different looking than all the other vertebrae, actually. All right. So the unique parts of it. First of all, the anterior arch. So just as it says, the anterior arch is just the anterior aspect of it. This is a lot of words, so just write it down, and then after you think about it, it'll make sense. The posterior aspect of the anterior arch receives the bends. also known as the adductoid process. Of C2. That articulation forms the Atlanto axial joint. It is a synovial gliding. And synovial pivot. Okay. Those of you that have C2, go ahead and hold it up. It's the one with the little projection coming off the body. Looks like this. Okay, so this is C2. This is the odontoid process, also known as the dens. So all that's saying is that dens hooks up to the posterior aspect of the anterior arch. So it hooks right in there. It allows us to rotate our head and twist it around. Okay, second unique part of C1 is the 
posterior arch. So just as it says, it's the posterior aspect of C1. This is where the spinal cord goes through. Processes of C1 are the longest of all the cervical vertebrae. Okay, last thing, something called the lateral masses. Those are just the lateral sides here. They contain, and I didn't put it on there, but you know the word, they contain the superior and inferior articular processes. Articular process of C1 articulates with the condyle of the mandible. Sorry, condyle of the occipital bone. I'm off track. What do superior and inferior articular processes form? What kind of joint? Huh? Apophyseal joints. Okay. So it forms the last apophyseal joint. The superior articular process of C1 is the condyle of the occipital bone. We call that the Atlanto occipital articulation. It is a synovial ellipsoidal joint. Some books don't, they say it's not a true apophyseal joint, so depending upon what book you read, some books say it's not a true apophyseal joint. Don't ask me why. I don't know why. Okay, moving on. That's it for C1. We're going to move on to C2. Okay, C2 is known as the axis. So first thing about C2 is the dens or odontoid process. It is a cone-like structure. It's very strong if you look at it, it's really thick. It arises from the upper surface of the body. Does it articulate with C1. what part of C1? The posterior. posterior aspect of the anterior arch. Okay. Remember, it articulates with the posterior aspect of the anterior arch. Okay, superior. 
superior articular processes of C2. They articulate with what? Inferior articulate. The superior articular processes articulate with the inferior articular processes of C1. which forms a what joint? Zygopapaseal, or a papaseal, however you want to say it. What's unique about this one is that it sits at a different angle. C1, C2, a papaseal joint sits at a different angle than the rest. You can see the apophis, that apophyseal joint open on an AP. So you see it open on an AP projection. If you want to write it down, we're, we'll get into it later. The rest of the apophyseal joints in the C-spine sit at a 90 degree angle. So it sits parallel. This one does. So if the rest of them sit at a 90 degree angle, what projection would open it up? A lateral. The rest of them, you'll see the apophyseal joints on a lateral projection. This one you see on the AP. So I guess you can say it sits at zero degrees. Yeah. All right, spinous process of C2. It's unique because it's the thickest from top to bottom. The spinous process of C2 is different than the rest because it's the thickest from top to bottom. So C2 is easy to identify in an image. You can see that big, thick spinous process. Okay, the last unique vertebrae is C7. Some books call it the vertebral prominence. C7 is unique because it has the longest spinous process of all of them. Who has a C7? You can really see it's, yeah, it's really long, the spinous process. Is it the longest of all cervical or of all the vertebrae? Of all the cervical. And remember, we, we talked about it before. You can usually palpate it if you follow your neck down. The first big bump that you come to, that's the vertebral prominence or the spinous process of C7. Okay, remember the typical ones are numbers what? Three through six. So let's just talk about the um, cervical vertebrae. They, they are different than the rest. Um, first of all, their bodies are different than the rest, meaning T and L spine. Number one, they're smaller. And number two, their inferior surface of the body They slant downward and they have a little lip on them. The slant in the little lip creates a 15 to 20 degree angle. Inferiorly. It creates a 15 to 20 degree angle inferiorly. 
So that's how much it slants down on the angle. So just like Masako said, that's why we angle cephalid on an AP cervical vertebrae projection. Okay, so depending upon who you're talking to, you should angle 15 to 20 degrees cephalid on an AP projection, cervical. What if you did a PA? Caudal? Caudal, exactly the opposite. You would angle 15 to 20 degrees caudal. Okay, transverse processes of the cervical vertebrae. All of them have a little foramina on them. Look at the ones on your desk. So no matter which one, they all have a little hole. Those are on the transverse processes. That little hole is called the transverse foramina. So on the transverse processes of all of them, one through seven, they have a foramina called the transverse foramina. Anybody know what goes through the transverse foramina? What's my best one? Vertebral artery and vertebral vein. The transverse foramina transmit the vertebral, you need to know this, the vertebral artery and vertebral vein. One goes up, one goes down. Okay, spinous processes of the C-spine. Except for C1. They have what we call bifid tips. <coughs> What's a bifid? That just kind of breaks apart into two. You can kind of see it on here. Bifid tips. Okay, articular pillar. There's something called the articular pillar, pillar in the cervical area. That is the strong column of bone between the superior and inferior articular processes. Look at your little vertebrae, but the flat little thing, articular processes. Right in between, you can see that there's this thick part of bone between the superior and inferior articular processes. Um, we have that in the lumbar spine, remember? That strong column between the superior and inferior articular process. What do we call it? What do we call it in the lumbar spine? That thick, strong column of bone. It's a part. It's part of a. No. It's part of the Scotty dog. Good. We in the lumbar region we call that area the pars interarticularis. What part of the Scotty dog is that? His neck or his colon. Good. What do we call it in the T spine? There isn't one. Nope. It's nothing. <laughs> See, like, yes. I'm not really clear. It seems like it's the front to the bottom. So, the superior and inferior articular processes are here. So, they go through that thick area. They just cross the particular pillar. Okay, apophysis. 
axial joints of the typical vertebrae. It includes seven and 12. Remember, what did I say? They sit at a what degree angle to the median sagittal plane. Mm -hmm. The apophyseal joints, except for C1, C2, they sit at a 90 degree angle to the median sagittal plane. So we need to do a lateral view. Mid-sagittal? Mid-sagittal. Lateral. lateral for the the typical ones seven through two c1 and c2 you see them on the ap the okay last thing the intervertebral foramina how is the intervertebral foramina formed uh, the superior notch of one vertebrae articulating with the inferior notch of another. These also slant downward 15 degrees. They sit at a 45 degree angle. to the median sagittal plane. So how do we demonstrate those? Oblique. Oblique. And if any of you have done a C-spine where they do obliques, some people say to angle RPOs and LPOs, to angle cephalic 15 degrees, and some people don't. So how many have done a C-spine oblique? Did they angle cephalic? Okay. The AP you always do. There's not an option. Some people just keep the angle cephalic for the obliques as well. It's up to you. Okay. We're going to, I'm going to talk a little bit about radiographing the cervical area. <coughs> Just some tidbits that you need to know. First of all, what's the recommended SID? Okay. A lot of places say to um, use 72 inches SID, especially for the laterals. Why? Why do you think you do? Specifically for the laterals, why do you think they want to use 72 inches? Decrease the magnification. To do what with magnification? Decrease it. Good. It decreases magnification because you have, what's this called? Oh, here to here. here. You have so much OID, which makes it bigger. So to compensate for that, we say to use 72 inches SID to decrease the magnification. If it's a trauma patient, trauma C spines, what's the first thing that you do for trauma C spines? Cross table lateral. First thing you do for trauma C spines is a cross table lateral. That's pretty much your answer for anything if it's on the registry. If it's a trauma patient, what's the first projection? Cross table lateral. Doesn't matter what you talk about. Okay. Um, who's done a, a trauma? C spine. A lot of times they don't do them much anymore. They take them right to CT, but anyway. So the first thing you do is cross table lateral. You never remove any of the support devices, like the collars, if they come in on a collar. You never take those things off. Unless someone's there telling you to do it, like a doctor, the ER doctor. Many times the image, the Cross table lateral needs to be checked by somebody for you to continue on to do whatever you need to do. Okay, so keep them as still as possible. Don't take that collar off. 
All right, terms. Some of these, most of these are relating to the C-spine, a couple of them are not. It's for every region. Um, subluxation could be anywhere in the spinal area. Subluxation is considered partial or incomplete. <clears throat> Dislocation. The surfaces still have contact with the subluxation. Generally, in the, in the spine, the only way to go is forward. You're, you're never, you're, unless something really bad happened, it's never going to go backward. So generally, subluxation in the spine area just means a forward slippage. Dislocation. That's where the articular surfaces do not have contact. Okay, compression fracture. That's a collapse of a vertebral body. Etiology. What does etiology mean? Reason or cause. Okay, if it's a trauma patient, etiology would be either they fell on their head or something fell on their head, on top of their head if we're talking about cervical region. Etiology, if it's pathological, how would you get a compression fracture that's pathological? Osteoporosis. Good. Osteoporosis. It's just a weakening in the bone. Next one is something called a clay shoveler's fracture. That's a fracture of the tip of the spinous process in the cervical area. It's usually just from muscles or tendons pulling it. That's why they call it clay shovelers. If you're doing a lot of shoveling, you can feel it in the back of your neck. Okay, Jefferson fracture. I see this one on a lot of registry stuff. So make a little star by this. A Jefferson fracture is a fracture of C1. Usually affects the anterior and posterior arch. anterior and posterior arch of C1. It usually results from compression of the cervical spine. Just FYI, there was a neurologist named Dr. Jefferson that first reported it, if you wanna know. That's how that name got there. Okay, next one is a Hangman's fracture. It is a fracture of the body or anterior aspect of C2. Can you repeat that? It is a fracture of the body or anterior aspect of C2. It's due to hyperextension. Why they call it the Hayman's fracture. T 
teardrop fracture is next. That's an avulsion fracture. What is an avulsion fracture? Just a tearing away of a little piece. So it's an avulsion fracture of the little lip on the body. Next is something called a cervical rib. That's just an extra set of ribs on C7. Anybody seen that out there? Kind of not real common, but it, it's out there. A lot of people have problems with because it causes pitching on your brachial plexus back there. Okay. Osteophyte is the next term. We find those everywhere. What are osteophytes? Bone spurs. Bone spurs. Little bony spurs. Okay. Last one is ankylosing spondylitis. Have you write down? I talked about it the other day. I'm gonna have you write down the other names. I see this a lot on registry stuff. It's also known as bamboo spine. <coughs> Bless you. Bamboo. bamboo spine. Also known as poker spine. Also known as Murray Strumpel disease. So this is uh, it's an inflammatory disease. Usually begins at the SI joints. progresses upward up your spine. Okay. It involves the fusion of your joints. And the spine becomes one solid bone. in a second so we have enough time to talk about it I just want you to, to recap or I want you to write down the recap of things that we see and what angles we see them at I think if you have it in a little chart it might be easier to remember so first of all let's talk about the angles of the apophyseal joints okay starting at the top meaning two through seven C spines they sit at a 90 degree angle. To the mid sagittal plane. Is it two through seven? C two through seven. So what projection would that be to see them open? Yeah. Lateral. Apophyseal joints. What angle do those sit at in the T spine? 70. 70. 70. Right. So we make a 70 degree oblique from the AP position.
what if we started lateral? Mm -hmm. 20 degrees now, good. Last, the L spine. Apophyseal joints. 32 to 52. What's 32, the lower or the upper? Lower, just think about it. They keep progressively getting more and more of an angle, the apophyseal joints, if you look at the numbers. So what's the median range for the L spine? 45, so we just do 45 degree obliques for the L spine. Or it could be from a lateral too. All right, the other thing, intervertebral foramina. Let's make a little list of those. Starting with the C spine. We just went over it. What, what angle do they sit at in the C spine? Five. Intervertebral foramina in the C spine sit at a 45 degree angle to the mid sagittal plane. So we see them on the 45 degree obliques. T spine. degree. T-spine is a 90 degree angle to the median sagittal plane. So you see them on the lateral, lateral position. What about the L-spine? 90 degree as well. Okay. They sit at a 90 degree angle to the median sag sagittal plane, just like T-spine. So we do a lateral to open up the intervertebral foramina. All right, let's go on to this mnemonic. Some people love this, some people can't stand it. Some of my students, the first thing they do when they sit down to the registry, you get this little dry erase board, they write down this. TLC, R-A-R-A-A-I. You guys talk about it out there? Nope, it's first you heard it. All right, so that top row, that top row stands for the region of the spine. So T stands for thoracic. L stands for lumbar. And C is cervical. In case you're wondering, this has been around forever. I learned it when I was in school. So it's not something we've recently picked up. All right, the middle row, R A R. That is the side that's demonstrated. We used these terms last semester. R means remote. What's another term for remote side? Hmm? Distant. Remote is furthest away. Or do you want to say upside? That helps you. Remote is the one that's furthest away from the image receptor. Adjacent is the one that's closest to the IR, or downside, if you want to think of it that way. Some people like it, some people don't. And the last row stands for the structure that's demonstrated. A 
hands for our Papa Seal joint. The second R's. The, the R's. Oh, it's the same yeah. Okay. The two A's stand for a Papa Seal joint. And the I is the intervertebral foramen. Okay, you guys, keep in mind. This mnemonic is for RPOs and LPOs. Okay, so you know I'm gonna ask you, what if they were AOs? What switches? This switches if they're AOs. The side that's demonstrated will switch if it's AO. So if it's AO, it's the adjacent, remote, adjacent. That's the only thing that will switch. Same thing's demonstrated, no matter if you're PO or AO, it's just that the side is different, size demonstrated. All right, so let's do this. So this is the image receptor and this is my position. First of all, what position is this? LPO. Good. This is an LPO. My left posterior surface is closest to the image receptor. If I was doing a C-spine, what's demonstrated? First of all, what structure is demonstrated? Okay. The intervertebral foramen is going to be demonstrated. If it's a C-spine, which on this, I'm not gonna say it again, this position, what would be, so which one is demonstrated? Which intervertebral foramen? Right versus left. Oh, I'm not gonna say it on both. The right, okay, so if I'm LPO, doing a C-spine, the remote intervertebral foramen is demonstrated, that would be my right one. Let's say I was doing this position for an L-spine. What is this position? RPO. First of all, what's demonstrated? A popliteal joint. Which one? The adjacent one. So which one would that be? The closest one to it, which would be my right apophyseal joint. Um, RPO, my right apophyseal joint, and my L spine is demonstrated. You get where we're going? Yeah. You have to think about it. Does somebody totally not get it? It's okay. You don't get it? All right. I'm not even going to AOs yet. So if we do an LPO or RPO, let me erase this. So I'm doing an LPO or RPO in my thoracic region. It's the remote apophyseal joint that's demonstrated. If I'm doing a, an L-spine, it's the adjacent apophyseal joint that's demonstrated. Okay, so if you ask me a question, you're going to say, what is demonstrating the LPO C-spine demonstrated? Okay. You're going to have to tell me right versus left. I'm not going to let you do the adjacent remote. See what I'm saying? So, did you say LPO? Like, well, how would the question be? Yeah. Um, you were doing an LPO T spine. What's the demonstrated? The most apophyseal joint. Which is which one? The spine. CLA. I'm doing a T spine. I'm doing an LPO. You said it correct, but here's this is an LPO. What's my remote side? So my right apophyseal joint is demonstrated mm -hmm. in an LPO T-spine. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm doing an 
LPO C spine. What's demonstrated? The right side. The remote what is demonstrated in an LPO C spine? Like the remote side? The remote side it would be an LPO? The right side? The right what is demonstrated in a C spine? Good. My right intervertebral foramen is demonstrated in an LPO C spine. Don't get it over here. You need to look at it. How about if we do it again on Thursday? Okay, just think about it. It is helpful. Some people say they love it, and some people just, they'd rather so just on, memorize it. On a, on like a RPO or LPO, like an LPO lumbar, that's in, Apophyseal. The apophyseal joint is demonstrated. Yeah, right there. Like what is adjacent. What is, adjacent. That's the, so if your LPO, what's the adjacent one? Left or right? The right. The left. The adjacent. This one's adjacent to the IR. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Remember, you guys, it's totally opposite of your AO. That's going to be on there as well. You just swap these letters. It's the opposite side if you're AO. When you get your test, just write that thing down. This stuff is registry. Oh yeah, it's all about the registry. Did you get it? Uh, I'm gonna study. <laughs> okay. <laughs>